Good evening. Uh, thanks so much for your time with us. This is News at 10 on TV3. My name is Bright Nana Amfu. We are live from our studios here and we're streaming on Facebook, News on TV3 and freenews.com. You can be part of the conversation. We begin the night with highlights of the day's major news. And starting from here, 20 illegal and fake drug manufacturers, as well as unlicensed sexual enhancement drug distributors, have been rounded up in a dawn soup in parts of Accra. The joint uh, FDA and police operation also retrieved a number of fake, substandard, and unlicensed drugs at Adabraka, uh, Sahara, and the Kwame Nkrumah Circle. The immediate past director general of the National Communications Authority, William Tevye, and four others have been charged for causing financial loss to the state. The five accused persons are facing charges of conspiracy to willfully causing financial loss to the state, where millions of dollars spent on listening devices. Members of Parliament are divided on whether or not the Minister of Special Development Initiatives, Mavis Howard Kumsin, should resign. Whereas the minority is asking the minister to resign, the majority insists the minister must stay in office. Festive occasions such as Christmas always come with a boom in business and trading activities. With just a few days to Christmas, livestock traders at North Industrial Area and Kwame Nkrumah Circle are experiencing high patronage. They say they are hoping to cash in to make up for the poor sales they experience during the year. On the international front, Israel's embassy in Ghana has expressed disappointment with the West African state's decision to back a UN resolution condemning the U.S.'s recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The statement said that Israel regrets their vote and will hope such mistake will not be repeated by Ghana in subsequent motions. An overwhelming 128 countries voted for the resolution that effectively called on U.S. President Donald Trump to administer or withdraw its recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Thank you so much for staying with us, our viewers in Bolga in the Upper uh, East region. If you are watching us from Kumasi in the Ashanti region, and if you are with us from Winneba in the Central region, thank you so much for your time. This is News at 10. Let's start with the big one. We're starting with this developing story. Members of parliament are divided on whether or not the Minister of Special Development Initiatives, Mavis Howard Kumsin, should resign. Whereas the minority is asking the minister to step down, the majority leader, Osei Chimen Sabonso, insists the minister must stay in office. This follows allocations of 800,000 cities for the ministry's website. What the minister and the government they are trying to do is to do an emergency landing. They are struggling. This is just a damage control. What we considered at the committee. In fact, I can give you copies of the document that we were given at the committee. And it's clear, it is 800,000, certainly not 80,000. So, um, is the minister telling me that he's such an incompetent lady to the extent that she couldn't even read and understand what is in a, her, her own document and she brought it to the parliament house for us to look at it. This is gross incompetence. I don't think that she even deserves to occupy the highest office as a minister of state. She should go immediately. She doesn't qualify to occupy that office. The minister of finance was also uh, expected to provide us with the areas of application of the ABFA. 
the annual budget funding amount, that is from the petroleum revenues. He also defaulted in doing that. Did anybody ask them to resign? The speaker would urge us, please, let's approve of it, and later they will come. Let's be consistent, as I always tell my colleagues. But going forward, I think we should be much more diligent. Members of parliament should be much more diligent. If the 80 was the figure that was there, the members should have done the adding up and it would have shown at the committee level that there was a mistake. Let's see on this issue. Now, questions have been raised as to why Parliament approved that budgetary allocation, notwithstanding the concerns about alleged bloated figures. So let's do on it and speak to the Executive Director of the African Center for Parliamentary Affairs, Dr. Rashid Draman, who's just uh, joined me on the four lines. Good evening, sir. Grateful for your time. Good evening. So let's begin from here. 800,000 uh, cities for a website. It went through civil servant technical uh, 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 hands. It got to parliament. The two sides approved of it. We are told that the minority raised the red flag, and yet it was approved. Does this suggest that perhaps the House uh, do not do uh, due diligence to some of these uh, issues? Yes. Um, good evening to your viewers, and, and thanks very much for having me. Hello, Dr. Draman, can yes. you hear me? Yes. Great. So uh, I was asking earlier that this budget went through technical hands, civil servants, public servants. It came to parliament. $800,000, uh, it was not uh, seen. We're yes. told that the minority raised the red flags, and yet it got approval. Does it suggest that perhaps parliament fails to do due diligence when it comes to some of these issues? All right, we'll try and raise back Dr. Rashid Draman, the executive director of the African Center for Parliamentary Affairs, uh, who's uh, joined me on the phone, but he's unable to hear me from the studios here. But uh, the news is that some questions have been raised as to why Parliament approved the budgetary allocation, notwithstanding the concerns about alleged bloated figures. 800,000 cities for a website. Today we're told that the minister said it was a typo error and that it was 80,000 cities. Exactly what is the figure did parliament approve of the budget without uh, thoroughly uh, going through there let's uh, stay on this and speak to the executive director of the african center for parliamentary affairs dr rashid uh, draman dr rashid can you hear me now yes i can hear you right so uh, i asked earlier that what does this show of parliament approving eight hundred thousand dollars when in actual fact, the minister said it was $80,000. Uh, well, I think, um, uh, thank you very much um, for having me. What, what this suggests is that um, our parliament, I think, needs to do uh, a much better job in terms of scrutiny, in terms of uh, explaining to Ghanaians mm. um, how these things occur. Uh, look, we live in a democracy, and democracy is simply a government by explanation. And financial scrutiny for a country like Ghana, I think, is uh, a key, is an essential part of this democratic process and government by, by explanation. And we need to make sure that um, when our lawmakers um, are faced particularly with a budget, in a government that is in a hurry, in a government that wants to leave a very big legacy, and in a government that touts the, the, uh, the itself of uh, making sure that it wins Ghana off aid. I think both the ma minority and the majority, particularly the majority in, 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 uh, in, in this case, has a responsibility to make sure that every single city that is budgeted for is spent 
according to um, maybe the wish of parliament is spent according to a plan that can help the government achieve its objectives. I see. It's, 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 it's very disappointing that, you know, despite the flaws in these budget allocations, parliament has gone ahead to approve this budget. I mean, I think it beats, it beats my mind. Dr. You know, man, let, let me, sorry, let me cut in and ask you this. We yes. were told by reports from Parliament House that the minority raised the red flags when 800,000 was budgeted for a website, and yet it passed through. Pass, does it suggest that numbers, numbers in the House, perhaps, is the reason why this was approved? No, I, I think we, we say that in, in most instances, the, I mean, in parliamentary parlance, we say that the majority would have, uh, the minority would have its say, but the majority would have its way. But I think when it comes to issues of finance, it's issues of our livelihoods. I think that the majority and the minority have a responsibility to work together. I see. Then it means that the minority in this case were irresponsible. Um, well, I think that uh, I would not say that. I would just simply say that I think uh, they are not living up the expectation uh, of Ghanaians. Because uh, particularly, as I said earlier, this is a government led by a president who said he's in a hurry, a president who said he, he has a lot of work to do, they have very big objectives to achieve. And a government that says that it wants to win Ghana off aid. You can't win the country of aid if, if our monies are not spent judiciously. I mean, the countries that don't depend on aid depend on their own resources, and they ensure that every single dollar, every single CD, or whatever currency is used judiciously according to the wishes of parliament, according to uh, um, standards of accountability and probity. It, it, then it brings us to sharp focus, the fact that, look, a few months ago, uh, some few months ago, six, seven months ago, when the Electoral Commission uh, got a website at 25,000 cities, we complained yes. that this is too much. Today, the website is $180,000. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission got uh, uh, a, a mechanized borehole for 60,000 cities. We said it was too much. Today, it is 132,000 cities. Perhaps, uh, is it not an issue of the fact that uh, we're not being uh, uh, prudent enough and that we only criticize for criticizing sake and that we will do the same when we have a chance to take decisions? Well, I mean, that's, that's the sad part, uh, uh, my brother. That's the sad part of our democracy. Usually, when a party is in opposition, its rhetoric is completely different from when it, it gets power. You know, in, 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 in every democracy, you know, parliaments are categorized into three when it comes to budgeting. Mm. It's either a parliament that is a budget-making parliament or a parliament that is a budget influencing parliament, or a parliament that is a, a, a parliament without any control at all when it comes to the budget. In our case, in the case of our parliament, I want to believe that it's a budget influencing parliament. I mean, this is an example, this is an instance where parliament needed to show that it could influence um, uh, the budget process through the scrutiny that, that took place. True, it was raised by the minority, but what is wrong, I think, with the majority simply agreeing that, I mean, these were, you know, uh, inaccuracies, these were inefficiencies in the, in the budget of, uh, of that ministry. Uh, for that matter, the, the budget needed to be uh, um, revised by the ministry before it gets approved. Dr. Rashid Raman, I'm grateful for your time with us. He's the executive director of the African Center for Parliamentary Affairs uh, uh, talking to me. We're staying on this issue because uh, the minister, while speaking to journalists in parliament, said that she's ready to resign following revelations that her budget is inflated. The minister has since said the website charge 
is 80,000 cities and uh, not 800,000 cities. The minority has rejected the explanation and branded her as incompetent. So you hear from me? I'm not ready to put it. My also for me. My yeah. no problem, I'll resign for them. Sure. Can, can, we, can we speak? Please, what's your problem? I'm not ready to talk to you. What is oh. it? Ah. Hello. I'm okay. The Minister for Special Development Initiatives, uh, Hawa uh, Kumsin, not ready to talk to journalists. That's what she says. She's not ready to talk to journalists. This is News at 10. Let's step on the break. When we come back, we'll tell you more about what is in court. NCA bosses, the previous administration, are in court. We have more on that. Stay with us. Bye. Thanks so much for your time. The immediate past director general of the National Communications Authority, William Tevier, and four others have been charged for causing financial loss to the state. The five accused persons are facing charges of conspiracy to willfully causing financial loss to the state where millions of dollars spent on li listening devices. Three out of the five accused persons appeared at an Accra High Court charged with 16 other charges. The accused persons pleaded not guilty to the charges when the Attorney General Gloria Kufu read the facts of the case and their plea taken. Justice Eric Che Bafo granted the three accused persons bill to the tune of $1 million each with three sureties and are to surrender their passports to the registrar of the court. According to the state, former board chairman Eugene Bafuboni, Director General William TV, former Deputy National Coordinator Naraji Osman, were aided by a private citizen, George Opong, to engage in the act that led to the financial laws. The state said the previous government contracted an Israeli company, NSO Technology Limited, to supply listening equipment at a cost of $6 million for the authority to monitor conversations of persons suspected to be engaged in terror activities. Sitting resumes on Tuesday, January 9. Find more of that story on 3news.com. Ghana and the World Bank Group have signed a credit agreement worth $200 million uh, for the second macroeconomic stability for comprehensive or competitiveness and growth development policy financing program. Director of operations at Dalex Finance, Joe Jackson, says the facility will help address some of the inherent challenges in the 2018 budget. The $200 million credit is for the financing of the 2017 budget and economic policies of government. The, the second macroeconomic stability for competitiveness and growth development policy financing program is in line with government's commitment to continue the stabilization program over the medium term. Director of Operations at Dallas Finance, Joe Jackson, was of the view the credit facility will help address some of the fundamental challenges in the economy. The, the big, huge issues that affected us were not addressed in the budget and this agreement seeks to address some of those things it has to do with managing our our incomes and managing our subsidies it has to do with managing the salaries and the impact even more important it has to do with better governance of our state-owned enterprises now i tell you some of the things that happen at state-owned enterprises are criminal the $200 million credit agreement will have a strong focus on legal, policy and institutional measures that may transcend political circles. This is the second part of an agreement that was signed by the previous government. So there is some hope that they are truly transcending political cycles. Of course, the previous one had different targeted outcomes. But this the targeted outcomes here make, make a lot of sense and I hope it has to do with managing our debt better. It is aimed at stronger institutions for more predictable fiscal outcomes, enhanced debt management capacity, other outcomes expected are more effective public investment management and reinforcing social protection for the poor and vulnerable.
part of this 200 million is going to be applied to better governance to make sure that these state-owned enterprises really spend what they earn and 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 they do this taking the whole country and the context and the environment into into consideration i hope this will truly give us the outcomes that have been set out. The combined success of the program is crucial for macroeconomic stability and a prerequisite for sustained growth. The financing is the second in a series of development policy operations planned for 2015 to 2017. The first was $150 million dispersed in August 2015. The Deputy Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Bright Reku Brobi, has announced the in initiation of strict legal compliance regime among labor recruitment agencies in the country. At the inaugural ceremony to usher in new members into the guild, the Deputy Secretary Minister affirmed the decision is born out of the brutalities meted out to some Africans abroad. Several private recruiting agencies over the years have lured many youth to abroad, promising them good jobs. But these people end up being maltreated and assaulted. Most of these recruitment agencies are not registered with government. At the inaugural ceremony in Accra, the Deputy Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, Bright Rekubrobe, said government is initiating reforms in the sector. So we will come out together with PEG, an accredited institution, and we will discuss this with the embassies so that if you have certificate from them, government will assume that you have been groomed before you are sent outside there to work. The president of the Private Employers Guild, Zach Rahman, wants government to see the association as an improved entity that would not compromise on what is right. He added the group has adopted strategies to develop and streamline operations of members in the recruitment sector. Most of the recruitment agencies in this country are people without licenses. And it's not easy to say that you're going to end their business. So what we did was to bring all these agencies simply to sanitize the recruitment business in this country. He wants measures instituted to curb migration to Gulf countries. There are a whole lot of things that we have put in place. We are going to be doing training, we are going to be doing grooming. Because most of these people who travel to these countries don't go through training process, they don't go through grooming. They know absolutely nothing about the said country they are going to. Some recruitment agencies were however not worried about the difficulties involved in acquisition of licenses. And that's how we're wrapping up the show for tonight. Thanks so much for your time on 3FM 92.7. If you watched us on TV3, we're also grateful for your time. Wishing you a great, great weekend and Merry Christmas ahead of Monday. Stay with us here on TV3. There are more goodies for Christmas. My name is Bright Ananfo. Thanks so much for your time. <laughs>